Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take your top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some positive news, but there's a lot of negative things swirling around in the Twitterverse and YouTube. But let's just stick with the positive first up. So we've got growing number of institutional investors are Ethereum first and Ethereum only, says crypto giant Grayscale. That makes me pretty bullish on Ethereum, especially with what's happening Ethereum 2.0. Also, Standard Charter, a British multinational bank, the CEO Bill Wender says that digital currency's widespread rollout is absolutely inevitable. And this is just more good stories about the institutions and actually even the banks who are starting to embrace cryptocurrency and digital assets. On top of banks, we've also got governments, but not in the best way. China is going to hand out $3 million worth of digital yuan as JD.com becomes the first online platform to accept it. So this is great as far as digital assets go, but it is China and it is their reserve bank currency. And the question has to get asked, is China beating every other country out there as far as adoption of cryptocurrencies and digital assets? So we're getting all that first, take a look at the market. So it's about 4 p.m. El Paso, Texas time it is December 7th and uh, you're getting a two for today. Uh, actually tonight in about uh, three or four hours, we're gonna talk about the uh, digital asset news Cardano staking pool. That should be great. It's a premiere. It'll be happening at 7 p.m. Mountain time. Little thing looks like this. So I will link that in the description of this video, but let's see what we got today. So going for the top 20, which is really what I care about. Uh, Bitcoin's down a little bit, but it's still 19.1. So nothing's really happening and again, uh, this is when all the money's made. When everything's moving sideways, everybody gets bored, they don't want to put any money in. This is when you put money in. This also, the the, the really the best times when everything goes down. But uh, this is when people forget and they just go, ah, just leave it in the background, I'll get it later. This is not that time. This is the time to really take a look at it and go, you know what? Accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, Ethereum's also dropping uh, a little bit, uh, 0 0.7 down to 589. XRP, watch out, 60 cents. Looks like it's gonna be around 60 cents for a while unless something major happens, but we'll see. Tether's tether, nobody cares. Uh, Litecoin, about 1.2% up, and uh, I think that's gonna be one of the bigger uh, winners for the week, because we'll see, especially with PayPal uh, pumping it. 1.1 uh, for Bitcoin SV, no idea why, but sure. Monero, 4.6, anything great? Nah, not really. 5.2 for OKB. Again, I don't care. So that is what is going on in the crypto space. Let's see how we would look if we compare that to not the US dollar, but to Bitcoin. So if you just would invest it in these projects, you might have beat Bitcoin. Well, Tether's Tether. No, again, nobody cares. Litecoin, yeah, sure. 0.6, 1.3 for Bitcoin SV. Woo, look at that. Bitcoin SV beat Bitcoin. Wow. 4.0 for Monero and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's fantastic. And before we get into it, I've seen a lot of negative things about people uh, talking about different projects and things are going to you know, be sold off. It's going to be awful. That's the great thing about being a dollar cost averager uh, like me and you is that uh, I don't care. I, I mean, really, if, if things get sold off, I'm like, great. If the price goes up, I'm like, great. I just that's just how it works. It's fantastic. In 2017, I tried to time the market, try to trade, which is awful. And uh, now I've just been accumulating for like the last three years. It's like the easiest feeling in the world. It's great. And uh, either way it goes, I I'm happy. So let's jump into today's story and get into this. So first up, Grayscale is saying that people are buying Ethereum, institutions are buying Ethereum, and Ethereum only. That to me is quite interesting. So what the heck is going on? Well, Grayscale is reporting that institutional investors are increasingly asking for exposure to smart contract Ethereum and sometimes only to Ethereum, which is kind of weird because when I've been talking to some people on the inside, they're like, hey, look, we people only want Bitcoin. That's all they really care about. But Grayscale is telling, saying the exact opposite. Like, you know what? They're coming in. I think what it is, they're probably coming in as institutions and going, well, we know crypto is going to be big and Bitcoin can only go up so much. And Ethereum has a tremendous upside uh, just to get to, you know, just to back to its all time high. So maybe that's what they're looking at. And on top of the fact that Ethereum 2.0 went off without a hitch, it's going to actually hit. And uh, I think it's going to be huge. It's look, it's either Cardano or, or, or uh, Ethereum. I don't know which one's going to be big or which one's going to be massive, but one of those is going to be the big, big winner. And the other one's just going to be a big winner. So whatever. So investment managing director Michael Sonnenschein said this. 
over the course of 2020, we're seeing a new group of investors who are Ethereum first, and in some cases, Ethereum only. There's a growing conviction around Ethereum as an asset class, and I have to agree because everything's built on Ethereum, so why wouldn't you do it? On top of that, you got everything you know going off in, in DeFi, and that's going to be a huge enterprise. So really, it is programmable money, and you can build everything on it. It's just like the, the protocol for email. You can build everything on that. That So it's the same thing with Ethereum. They're just going to build and build and build. I think it's going to be massive. And that's why I've got, I mean, between Bitcoin and Ethereum, that's like 75% of my portfolio, honestly. Anyhow, during this year's Q3, the Grayscale Ethereum Trust has received weekly inflows of 15 million. So Q3 this year, 15 million. Compared with Q2's net inflows of 10.4 million and Q1's inflow of 8.5. So uh, every quarter seems like people want Ethereum more and more and more. And it only accelerates as they see the success that it has. I was kind of worried with Ethereum 2.0 not being able to hit its milestones, but it did. And that was my big one. And now I'm just like, well, it's just gonna go to the moon. So let's just keep putting money into it every single day. I put idolic cost average into four cryptocurrencies right now. It is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Voyager. And I talked about why on my, on my Twitter account, but it only makes sense uh, for those four, and I think Voyager is going to be the sleeping giant. Anyhow, while Bitcoin has witnessed notable yearly gains, Ethereum is up over 360% on the year as the popularity of DeFi uh, can use to grow. So I was like, really? That's how much it is? I don't think that's true. So I took a look at CoinGecko, and I went to Ethereum, and I scrolled down, and even farther. I took over the one year chart real quick and all the way back here we're looking at January man I didn't I totally forgot it was this low I totally forgot it was a hundred and can you imagine this it was 130 bucks on the first of January imagine and again this is when everybody forgets and they sleep on it like oh I'll get it later or it's not that exciting and then it goes up and everybody starts buying and then the people sell off they take profits and then people right down here went geez it was 110 on March. They're just like, nah, coronavirus, not going to go up. And they don't do anything. This is when all the money is made. This is where all the suckers get played. This is the money. So now that it's going up, I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope it dips again. That's all I can say. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Next up, Standard Charter CEO Bill Winters says digital currency's widespread rollout is absolutely inevitable. So uh, what's going on here? So the CEO says that Currencies, digital currencies are absolutely inevitable. Uh, he is from Standard Chartered. First of all, just if you don't know, Standard Chartered is a British multinational banking and financial services company headquartered in London, England. Operates a network of more than 1,200 branches and outlets across more than 70 countries and employs 87,000 people. So pretty big type of institution, I would say. And uh, if the banks are sitting here going, you know what, this is going to be big, I think it's time to really pay attention. I mean, not for us. We know where it's going, but for the other people to come in, it only makes sense, right? He states this, I think there's absolutely a role for central bank digital currencies, as well as non-central bank sponsored digital currencies. I wonder which ones those could be. If you don't know, take a look at what PayPal did. Because they said, you know what? We don't want to deal with securities. So we're just going to go Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Whatever else they add, they are the kingmakers. I think it's going to be enormous. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Could it be XRP? I know, I know you're all chomping the bit to say it. Oh, it's got to be XRP. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, let me know why or what it is and why you pick it. That will be interesting. Standard Charter is set to announce further news as far as digital assets along these lines in the coming days, he added. So hopefully the announcement is we are going to totally embrace central bank digital currencies we're also looking at x y and z <laughs> crypto to implement because he says right here non-central bank sponsored digital currencies would be fantastic just it's interesting and i think when i see all these stories i think to myself there's a lot of big things going on and i don't really care if the market pulls back or it drops 40 percent or 60 percent whatever else you can kind of see what's going to happen i don't know if it's good, I mean, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. So I've, I've always said it's not about the if, it's about the when. And I think when is 2021, 2022. Those are the big years, but only time will tell. And yeah, to finish up this article, winners said the greatest opportunity for digital currencies could be in new niche segments that don't 
replicate existing fiat currencies. He states the really interesting developments for me is to have currencies that don't match a currency in and of itself, but are intended to capture either a superset of a subset. So really breaking down into those small niches. And that's the whole thing with business as well. If you want to be successful, it's not about having a me too company. It's about catering to the niches. And that's really what uh, sets people apart. And they have built their whole career on it. So if we take a look at cryptocurrencies digital assets. Like I always felt like currencies, you can only have so many currencies, right? That's why I always say cryptocurrency and digital assets, because they can only be so many currencies. But if you take a look at other types of factors, like, I mean, Ethereum, we have, of course, DeFi and everything else building on that, all the dApps. And the biggest thing that always comes to mind is VeChain because it can help with uh, counterfeit uh, type of items, but not only counterfeit, but you can also track uh, medication, you can track food, you can track perishables, all the things that need to be tracked on the blockchain, and you can really eliminate a lot of costs. I mean, heck, Walmart did that not too long ago, and they they cut like uh i think they said like 90 percent of the costs and another pharmacy said the exact same thing and it was almost instantaneous so when we start to see these types of people start to talk about it it's just kind of swirling all around us and i think there's big things uh in store so let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on to our last piece which is i think <laughs> kind of negative kind of positive and it is china hands out three million of essentially helicopter money digital yuan and I, I, I think about it, and I'm like, you know, it's interesting how they do things over there in China. They're like, you know, we're going to do a lottery, and we're going to give away some money, and it's free, and no big deal. And we want you to get used to it. We want you to kind of like, you know, get, just relax, just let it happen. It's going to be okay. And just take this this digital currency and download this app, and it's so, so, so super simple. You don't have to do anything. Oh, we're, we're, of course, we're tracking you, but that's okay. Just keep taking this money. It's all right. And before you know, you're like, damn, what what the hell happened? All my everything's being tracked, and now they're shutting off my money. I don't know what's going on. I can't pay for my rent, and they're just shutting me down. Jeez, who knows that's going to happen? But that's that's what I always have a fear of. So, what's going on in this article? Well, here's what's going on. So, Chinese e-commerce firm JD.com said it has become the first online platform to accept the country's digital currency. I don't know what JD.com is because I am uh, not in that region of the world. So I had to take a look at them, and apparently they're just like Alibaba. Uh, JD.com uh, is known as uh, Jingdong and formerly called 360 Buy. Chinese e-commerce company headquartered in Beijing, one of two massive business new consumer online retailers in China by transaction volume and revenue. So that's got to be enormous. And a member of the Fortune Global 500 and a major competitor to Alibaba. So that's pretty big. And they are stepping up and going, yeah, you know what? Since uh, the CCP owns us anyhow, we're, <laughs> we're going to help you guys out. And uh, that's what's happening. So a total of 20 million yuan or $3 million will be up for grabs in a lottery, according to WeChat post by JD Digits, JD.com's fintech arm. Oh, these guys are huge. Winners will receive a so-called red packet via an app containing a maximum of 200 yuan of the digital currency. So of course, everybody's going to you know vie for that. Everybody likes free. It doesn't matter what it is. They're going to like free. They're going to line up like lemmings. They're going to take it. And uh, because really they have no choice, let's be honest. Now, uh, they had a choice at one point with, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, all the different cryptos that were out there. But uh, just uh, last week, the CCP said, hey, we're shutting off Bitcoin miners. Hey, we're shutting down exchanges. Uh, to me, I mean, people always talk about how China wants to destroy Bitcoin. They don't want to destroy. I don't think they want to destroy Bitcoin. I think they just don't want to deal with it and they don't want it in their country. They want the digital yuan to become the next global reserve currency and they're making a hell of a good job of doing it because they're passing up all these sucker countries just like usa and leaving them in the dust and they're doing it by getting the people to accept that money right now and then as time goes on they can say you know what works pretty well for for these people let's expand it let's also do some trade with russia let's also do some trade with europe look we have digital yuan you can use it so easy there's no sanctions you can get around america and the u.s dollar i'm not saying that's what they're going to do I'm just saying that's what I want to. Uh, but thankfully, I'm not a leader of a country. So to finish up, this is not the first time China's hanging out a large sum of digital currency. In October, a total of 10 million yuan was handed up to citizens in China's technology hub, uh, Shenzhen, in a lottery. So uh, they know how to do it. They know how to play the game. And uh, I got to say, I mean, 
like them or hate them, love them or hate them, uh, you got to tip the hat and respect them for uh, what they're doing and uh, you know how they're really controlling the narrative, also controlling everybody else. So that is it for today. So I know it's a it's a quick one. I've been really busy with this Cardano staking pool, and it's going to be great. I I'm really excited about it. I when I was doing my research, I could not believe how far ahead Cardano is as compared to Ethereum 2.0 in staking. It's like it's like light years. Uh, you're going to see in the video. So. Uh, tonight, if you got time, stop by. I'll put that in the uh, uh, description. And uh, we'll be doing this in like three or four hours, and then off we go. Hey, I got seven likes already. That's pretty cool. All right, so if you like these types of videos, I mean, two minutes going to pop up on your left and right, and I'll let YouTube do its magic. And uh, that is it for today. So uh, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, which is in like four hours.